Hi there. Um, we're going to start a new bedtime story. And um, this story is one that I we usually read at the end of the year. Um, it's historical fiction. Um, after the gold rush, uh, there were a lot of people who came to California that were from China. Um, China was experiencing really harsh economic conditions. And when people heard that gold had been discovered in the United States and in California, which is fairly close to China, it's just across the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, many, many, many people decided to um, leave China and come to California to look for gold. They figured that would be the best way for them to find success for their family. And so um, because of the harsh economic conditions. So many, many men came to California looking for gold um, from China. And when gold started to disappear and there wasn't as much to be found, there were a lot of people that were from China that really didn't want to go back to China or couldn't afford to go back to China. Um, also, there was a law passed called the Chinese Exclusion Act which prevented people from coming from China and some people got stuck here. So um, there was a big rush to build railroads because transportation was really rough. It was rough taking a ship to get to California and it was difficult to also travel overland. And so they decided that railroad companies decided that they would have a contest and they would build railroad tracks from the east coast of our country and that another company would start building railroad tracks from the west and that the two companies would build railroad tracks build railroad tracks build railroad tracks until um, they met up in the middle and the contest was to see which railroad company could lay the tracks the fastest well what happened is the companies that were in california hit the sierra nevada mountains and it was really difficult to build railroad tracks across the mountains. The railroad companies that were building in the east, they were just going across the Great Plains. So their only problem was when they hit rivers, they would have to build bridges or go around, um, figure out some way to go around um, the bridge or go around the rivers or find the part of the river that was the most narrow so that they could build a bridge over it. So this contest caused railroad companies to just power through building tracks. And a lot of the people in California that worked on building the tracks were from China. And the reason why is because the gold rush was all played out. There was no more gold to be found. And also the people from China, a lot of them were very skilled laborers and knew how to use gunpowder, knew how to use dynamite, knew how to use nitroglycerin, um, they knew how to use explosives, and so a lot of them took very risky jobs, very, very, very risky jobs, helping to build the railroad through California. Um, once they hit the Sierra Nevadas, they had a really difficult time because they had to blow through with explosives, blow through a lot of the mountain ranges, and dig tunnels through them because it was really difficult to build, put the track over the mountains. So um, this story that we're going to read, that I'm going to read to you as your bedtime story, is historical fiction. It's a book that I, we typically read at the end of every year. And so I thought I would read it to you um, as your bedtime story. It's called The Iron Dragon Never Sleeps. And it's a story about a relationship um, with a girl um, and a boy and how they forge a friendship and it's sort of a forbidden friendship because he is Chinese and she is not and she's wealthy and he is not and they make a connection with each other and enjoy each other's company despite all the odds and it's really kind of a lovely story so here we go the iron dragon never sleeps chapter one Woo! Winnie Tucker jumped. The shrill blast of the train whistle had surprised her. Then she blushed. Only babies and cats were scared of train whistles. She looked around quickly. Had anyone noticed? Her mother was reading a newspaper. The rest of the train car was mostly empty. 
Four men sat dozing, their heads slumped on their chests. A young woman rocked a baby in her arms. Across the aisle, though, a man was grinning at her. He had a scraggly gray beard and a scuffed hat. Winnie's grandfathers both had looked like that. They had been miners. Maybe this man was a miner, too. A bit loud, eh, he said. A little, Winnie admitted. Actually, she was in awe of the train. The great locomotive up front, eating fire and breathing steam, was like an iron dragon chained to the track. First train ride, the man asked. Uh Uh-huh. Her mother put down the newspaper. The first for both of us, she said. The man tipped his cap. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. I'm Jack Perkins, but call me Flapjack. Everybody does. Uh, Flapjack is a pancake, so that's an awesome nickname. Pancake. (laughs) Everybody does. Why is that, Winnie asked. On account of my favorite food. After panning for gold all day, I can eat a stack a mile high. I was right, thought Winnie. He is a miner. Winnie's mother smiled. Well, Flapjack, I'm Marjorie Tucker. This is my daughter, Winnie. We're on our way to Cisco. Going to Cisco myself, said Flapjack, to visit my brother. He's the station master there. The train wheels squealed as the train rounded a curve. This time, Winnie didn't jump. Flapjack looked out the window. Making good time, I see. Winnie pressed her nose against the glass. Flapjack was right. The train was going fast. The trees and orchards of the California countryside were flying by. So really, trains did not go that fast back then. But if you were used to walking, walking, I think you go about five miles an hour when you walk. If you were used to riding a bicycle, bicycles were invented in the late um, 1800s. If you were used to riding a bicycle, um, that was pretty fast. If you were in a horse and buggy being pulled by a horse, that was probably the fastest a person could go would be riding um, riding a horse or being in a horse and buggy or, or a speedy wagon. So um, a train seemed supersonically fast, even though they weren't that fast, but they seemed fast to everybody. The conductor had boasted that the train sometimes went as fast as 25 miles an hour. It was hard to believe. Winnie and her mother had left Sacramento early that morning. Winnie's best friends, Rose and Julia, had come down to the station to say goodbye. Three months, Rose had moaned. That's longer than forever. Julia had nodded sleepily. She will get to live in a hotel, though. Not a hotel, Winnie had reminded them. A rooming house. Well, it won't be the same summer without you, Rose insisted. Winnie had sighed at the time, and she sighed again now. What Rose had said was true, and she was going to miss them. She knew that. Still, she was excited. In a few hours, she'd be with her father again. She hadn't seen him in months. He was a mining engineer for the Central Pacific Railroad. It was a job that kept him on the move. This summer, though, he was living in Cisco. At first, when her mother had suggested they come stay with him, he had been against the idea. Cisco's no place for a girl like Winnie, he had written. Then her mother had written back, Considering how little you've seen of her lately, how can you judge what Winnie is like these days? In the end, he changed his mind. Her mother patted Winnie's shoulder. We'll be meeting Papa before you know it. Do you think he grew his beard again, Winnie asked? Her mother laughed. Eli Tucker hated to shave. His stubble was stiffer than a boar's hide, he complained. Whenever he traveled, he always managed to lose his straight-edge razor. Tickets? Tickets, please. The conductor was lurching his way up the car. He looked very grand with his frock coat, stiff collar, and bow tie. Tickets? Winnie held hers up to the conductor. I've done yours already, miss, he reminded her. One punch to a customer. He punched a hole in Flapjack's ticket. All bound for Cisco, eh? said the conductor. We're going to see my father, said Winnie. He's working on the Summit Tunnel. Maybe you know him, Eli Tucker. The conductor shook his head. Those fellows don't get back here much. Digging out number six keeps them pretty busy. Number six was the official railroad name for the Summit Tunnel. It was part of the railroad line from Sacramento eastward through the Sierra Nevadas. Someday the line would be part of a transcontinental railroad across the whole United States. And here's a little picture of her getting her ticket punched by the conductor. All the railroad tunnels were numbered in order. 
Winnie frowned. Numbers were so ordinary, she would have named the tunnels after book characters, like Hans Brinker or Rip Van Winkle. The train rumbled softly. Are we slowing down, Mrs. Tucker asked. Winnie looked out again. There was no room here for a depot. They were high on the edge of a cliff. This is Cape Horn, said Flapjack. All the trains stop here for ten minutes. Gives us time to enjoy the view. The train jolted to a halt. Passengers may disembark to inspect the view, the conductor announced. Winnie was not afraid of heights. At least she didn't think she was. And if the Central Pacific Railroad thought this place was worth stopping for, she would take a look. Cape Horn was a sheer granite bluff rising 1,500 feet above the American River. The train tracks ran along a ledge carved out of the mountainside. It was not very wide. Winnie took out her sketch pad. She loved to draw, but it had been too bumpy while the train was moving. She sketched quickly. Beyond the ledge was a steep canyon. Trees grew straight out of its sides like teeth on a comb. At the bottom was the American River. It was there, but farther downstream where gold had been discovered in 1848. Kind of makes you want to sing, huh? Sleepy Northern California in 1848. <laughs> 19 years had passed since then. The California gold rush was part of Winnie's family history. Her grandparents had been among the settlers flocking to California to make their fortunes. Her parents had met on a slag heap. So slag is when they were digging for gold or digging for silver. They would dig down really deep into the ground and all the stuff that they would pull out of the ground, they would throw in a pile called slag. And slag heaps would grow taller and taller and taller. And sometimes they would have landslides, right? So a, a slag heap is all the dirt that you've dug out to get the gold and silver out. So it's not very romantic saying her parents had met on a slag heap. <laughs> it's not very romantic. Neither family had ever struck it rich, but we found gold in each other, her mother liked to say. Winnie looked up at the cliff above them. Is this a natural ledge, she asked. Not at all, said Flapjack, and believe me, building it was tricky work. Actually, the Chinese crews did most of this. They were lowered down the side of the cliff in baskets with baskets of tools and blasting powder. They chipped out this ledge a piece at a time. It sounds dangerous, said Winnie. The old miner nodded. You could say that. Sometimes the rope slipped. Other times the poor devils were caught too close to the exploding blasting powder. Hundreds of them lost their lives. Winnie took a last look down. She tried to imagine herself being lowered down the cliff. Just the thought of it made her head spin. Come on, Winnie, said Mrs. Tucker. It's time to go. Chinese workers must be very brave, thought Winnie, as she followed her mother back on board. All right, tomorrow night is chapter two. We're going to find out what happens when Winnie sees her dad. <laughs> Very exciting. All right, talk to you later. Good night.